Hello, in this video we're going to go over solving this equation. This comes from Virginia Tech Regional Math Competition. So the equation is 3x minus x cubed equals the square root of x plus 2 and they're asking us to solve this one in real numbers. So at this point you may want to pause, think about the problem and then come back and watch the solution. So the first thing that I thought is, and that, that would be the most natural thing, to square both sides. The difficulty with that is that if you square both sides, you're going to end up with a degree 6 polynomial and who knows if that can be solved or not. I did square it and I realized that x equals 2 is going to be a solution if we square both sides. Because if we plug in x equals 2, we're going to get 6 minus 8 on one side and when you square that you get 4 and on the other side you get root 2 plus 2 and when you square that you also get 4. So x equals 2 is a solution when you square both sides. But still there would be a degree 5 polynomial and solving that it would not be very easy. So the next thing was okay let me first figure out what's the domain of this equation. In other words, what are the possible values that I can plug in onto both sides? So I need x plus 2 to be greater than or equal to 0. And I also need 3x minus x cubed to be greater than or equal to 0. So let's figure out what are the values of x that make both of these greater than or equal to 0. The first one tells me that the root is negative 2. The second one gives me the root of 0 and then plus minus root 3. So let's look at x plus 2 and let's look at 3x minus x cubed. So the four numbers that I have to plug in here are negative 2, negative root 3, 0, and root 3. If you look at x plus 2, it would be positive here. If you look at 3 times x minus x cubed, it would be 0 here, it would also be 0 here, it would also be 0 here. If you plug in x equals 1, that's positive here, and since there is no double root, it would flip here and here. So in other words, the acceptable x values are from negative 2 to negative root 3, or from 0 to root 3. So these are the acceptable values. Now let me write down the equation again, 3x minus x cubed equals root x plus 2. The next thing that I noticed was the key to solving the problem. If you look at this, there's a close relation between this uh, expression and the triple angle formula. So let me explain that. If you don't remember the tri triple angle formula, cosine of 3 theta is equal to, so there is a formula for this one. If you don't remember that, here's one way of driving this and there's I also have a video on this topic if you want to check out the description it will be in the description of the video. If you look at cosine of theta plus i sine of theta cubed this would be cosine of 3 theta plus i sine of 3 theta. If you expand the left side you get cosine cubed theta plus 3 cosine squared theta times i sine of theta plus 3 cosine of theta times i sine of theta all squared plus i sine of theta all cubed that's equal to cosine of 3 theta plus i sine of 3 theta. If you look at the real part of both sides, the real part of this the left side is going to be cosine cubed theta and then plus 3 cosine of theta times minus sine squared theta and the right hand side has real part of cosine of 3 theta. If you replace this guy by sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared so this would be cosine squared minus 1 that will give us cosine cubed theta plus 3 cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta equals cosine of 3 theta. Now if we simplify this we get cosine of 3 theta equals 4 cosine cubed minus 3 cosine of theta. Okay so there's a similarity between this one and the left hand side of the equality. If we rewrite this we get that. Now 
if I uh, notice x cannot be more than 2 or less than negative 2 based on the discussion that we had here. So based on the discussion here, the range for x is between negative 2 to negative root 3 or from 0 to root 3. So it cannot be more than 2, it cannot be less than negative 2. So I can replace x by 2 cosine of theta. So let's see what happens if you do that. And the inspiration was from the triple angle formula. We get 6 cosine of theta minus 8 cosine cubed of theta equals the square root of 2 cosine of theta plus 2. Of course, when I do that, I can restrict my theta to some angle between 0 and pi, because anything outside of that range would give me the same values. From 0 to pi, I obtain all possible values of cosine of theta. Now, this side, if you factor a negative 2, you will get 4 cosine cubed of theta minus 3 cosine of theta. And if you notice, that's exactly the triple angle formula. And if you factor a 2 from the right side, we get cosine of theta plus 1. Now, this side is negative 2 cosine of 3 theta. Let's look at what happens on the right. Let me remind you of the double angle formula. Double angle formula tells us cosine of 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. So this means 1 plus cosine of 2x is 2 cosine squared of x. So let's replace 1 plus cosine of theta by 2 cosine squared of theta over 2. Now since theta is between 0 and pi, theta over 2 is between 0 and pi over 2. So this becomes minus 2 cosine of 3 theta is equal to 2 cosine of theta over 2. And again, theta over 2 is in the first quadrant, so I can get rid of the square root without worrying about absolute value. So this means cosine of 3 theta minus cosine of 3 theta is equal to cosine of theta over 2. And theta is an angle between 0 and pi. Now, this is an equation that I can solve. So if I look at this, this is cosine of theta, I can add pi here is equal to cosine of theta over 2. Now, when are two cosines the same? When the two angles are either the same plus minus 2 pi or they are negative of each other plus minus 2 pi. So what, what does that mean? It means 3 theta plus pi is equal to 2 pi k plus theta over 2 or 3 theta plus pi is 2 pi k minus theta over 2. Okay, so let's uh, clear that out. We get 5 theta over 2 is equal to 2 k minus 1 pi, which means theta is 4 k minus 2 over 5 times pi, and k is an integer. This one gives me 7 theta over 2 is equal to 2k minus 1 pi. So that would give me theta equals 4k minus 2 over 7 times pi. Now, what we know is that theta is in the first or second quadrant, so theta is between 0 and pi. So what does that mean? If you plug in k equals 0, we get a negative angle. If you plug in k equals 1, we get 2 pi over 5. k equals 2 gives us 6 pi over 5, so that's too large. For the bottom, k equals 0 gives us a negative angle. k equals 1 gives us 2 pi over 7. k equals 2 gives us 6 pi over 7 and everything else gives us something outside of the range. So the answers are going to be 2 cosine of 2 pi over 5, 2 cosine of 2 pi over 7, and 2 cosine of 6 pi over 7. And that brings me to the end of the solution. If you like this video, 
I have a lot of videos like this on my channel. Feel free to check those out. And I will see you in the next video.